Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2, where Art Kirsch and I are with our favorite medical doctor, Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Likewise. Thank Hi, you. Dr. Liz. Good morning. Uh, I have um, a general question for you because uh, uh, I'm very fortunate to be aging because uh, the alternative sucks. Uh, <laughs> and in relatively good health. Uh, but I've been doing all sorts of uh, uh, diets here and there, uh, 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 some uh, very formalized or not. But all of them uh, seem to work better for me when I have a period of time, either daily or uh, uh, every other day or every third day, of not eating certain meals mm -hmm. and almost like fasting. I don't know if it's exactly like fasting. But is there any truth uh, or, or science or, or information about uh, maybe changing uh, eating patterns as we get older to uh, help uh, uh, us stay healthier? Yes, absolutely. There sure is. That's very interesting. Your your pattern that you've settled into is very interesting. As you are aware, there are religious traditions that go back thousands of years that have fasting as an occasional practice. And what we're learning now with science and scientific studies is that this type of restricting calories on an occasional basis is very good for us, it's good for our health, and it turns on an anti-aging gene. Mm, oh. That's interesting. And mm -hmm. what would the name of that gene be? Sirtuin, S-I-R-1 and S-I-R-2, but they oh. call them together the, the Sirtuin genes. So oh. if you hear about that, it's true. <laughs> they really have names. They have names, absolutely. <laughs> That's fascinating. Now we have in the past, we've talked about intermittent fasting and, and what you're saying now really is uh, not that idea of skip a meal, uh, you know, on a regular basis. You're, yes. you're talking about um, true fasting, I think, if you, cause you mentioned it religious. It uh, varies, it really varies. Uh, I'm talking about calorie restriction in, oh, in a, a variety of different ways. So, for example, you've mentioned intermittent fasting. We could talk a whole lot more about that. That's one example. And intermittent fasting refers to what we call in medicine timed eating. Oh, so you're okay. eating within a certain time. So, for example, someone might do intermittent fasting where they eat between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. All the yeah. food they're going to have, they just have it in that window. And then the rest of the day, the, of the 24 hours, they are fasting. They might right. be having water, might be having tea, but they're not having, they're not really taking in calories. calories so yeah. that's, that's what people are talking about when they say intermittent fasting. Yeah. But there's all kinds of different regimens of calorie restriction. And it's been studied in various animal models. And they have shown in these animal models, and they keep trying different animals and they keep finding the same thing of extending their life expectancy by up to almost 50% longer. Wow. wow. So basically just eating less, less calories. Yes. Is, is the key to living a little, one of the keys to living longer. That is correct. That's correct. Remember we had a conversation one time, there's another video about the, the blue zones around the world. Mm -hmm. So yes. places like Okinawa, Japan and Greece and Sardinia where people routinely live to a hundred or more in good health and good brain sharpness. Yeah. They are not eating a lot, and they are often uh, timing their eating so that it ends up, th they're not doing it on purpose. And we're not talking about doing a diet. I'm not specifically addressing weight loss. Yeah. We're talking about the, the, the fasting puts a bit of a stressor onto the cells, and it pushes the cleanup activity of the cells. This is the, what's really interesting. So can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about this S1 and S2 uh, that you're referring to that it produces? Uh, what no, that's that... the gene that gets activated. Oh, the gene gets yeah. activated. So can you yes. tell us, uh, what is the theory behind that gene uh, that helps with the anti-aging? Well, right now they're looking at a lot of different markers. They're looking at 
Okay, so this is not exactly to what you're talking about of the genes. So genes make proteins and the choices that we make influence the activation and deactivation of our genes. All right, so that's what we're, we're observing that the calorie restriction activates the sirtuin genes. It also influences the production of growth hormone. And mm. growth hormone is very interesting hormone. I, we've, I believe we've talked about it. We could definitely talk more about just that one hormone. Yeah. Very high levels when we're teenagers growing, and then it stabilizes and drops off as we get older. And growth hormone just helps with everything, every cell process. Okay, so, so that's what we're doing. Right now, we're still in the discovering these connections uh, phase. Wow. Um, this is this is kind of important, um, at least for me, because I I eat constantly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's and actually, actually John and I John and I have had bouts of successful dieting using intermittent yeah. fasting. We actually know a number of, of friends, and basically, eight hours that you're sleeping is part of that, and then another. Uh, that's right. Uh, when, when you're awake, and then that, that's how you get to like eleven or twelve, but. Uh, getting back to the, the the heart of what you were talking about, um, I know there've been animal studies because I've read a lot about them as well. But there also, it's, I don't know if they've done studies, but there are. There, there seems to be. It's almost. It's they make it sound cultish about uh, humans who highly restrict the amount of calories they eat. Uh, so I don't know if that's part of this concept of fasting. Or is it just calorie I reduction? I, that I that and they they seem to have uh, increased their longevity as a group. Uh, uh, right. Far in excess of anything somebody would have expected with such a highly restricted diet. Yes. Can you touch on that just maybe a little bit? Well, I I believe that that is correct. So again, any any lifestyle that incorporates some degree of calorie restriction is going to do that, uh, what we call hormesis. Hormesis is stress on the system that produces a positive result. Okay, we're improving DNA repair, we're reducing inflammation, and we're forcing the mitochondria in our cells to work more efficiently. Right. If you have less money in your bank account, you may live more efficiently. Same thing with calorie restriction. It hmm. forces the cells to do some cleanup and to function more efficiently and to clean up some any damage. OK, and like I said to, about DNA repair. And so that's what that's what we're observing with fasting wow. in general. So it can take a lot of different forms and I'm not endorsing one over another. I'm just commenting that that's what we're seeing more and more. I think that's partly why intermittent fasting is kind of catching on mm. because people feel they feel the benefit, they feel better. So a lot of programs out there, uh, but as the, the basic concept is that restricting calories in some way is good for our health. Okay. Well, I know when I when I don't overeat, <laughs> on those rare occasions when I actually don't overeat, um, I do feel better. I feel a little lighter and a little bit uh, more flexible and whatever. So uh, I can see that. Uh, I can see the wisdom in this and, and, and the results. Uh, is there a new look at what the, the, what the optimum calorie intake should be? I, I was told one time 1,200, 1200 calories is the average intake uh, for an American. Is that is there any optimal level now of calorie intake? <sighs> That's a tough question, John, because it is individual. It depends on people's goals. It, are you working on weight loss? Are you working on this type of anti-aging and timed eating for that purpose? Mm -hmm. uh, are you a man? Are you a woman? Do you have weight to lose? Are you trying to maintain your weight? Are you trying to gain weight if you're underweight, if you have any kind of illness and you want to keep weight on? So yeah. there's a lot to that question. And so I'm not really going to say w that a human body needs X amount. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely a calorie intake below which our body just goes into a starvation state and then we're using up muscle 
in yeah. order to keep the cell function going. And we don't want that. That's too low. Right. Which is <laughs> That's why, not what we're aiming for. Which is why, of course, every diet in the world says, before you start this diet, check with your physician. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so uh, maybe uh, uh, to tie this together, because it doesn't seem like there's a, a magic pill uh, that's uh, sitting on the horizon for this. So the concept of uh, fasting to some degree and anti-aging, uh, there seems to be a connection. Uh, so how should most of us think about this as we're beginning to maybe as we're getting older, uh, uh, the kind of things that we might be looking at or reading uh, to keep us informed about uh, the health benefits of, of some of this area? That's a wonderful question. And here's what I would say is the, a good focus to have is to focus on what we call nutrient dense foods. A good way to reduce your calories overall and to feed your cells what they need, but also be able to lower your total calorie intake is to focus on nutrient dense foods. And that really is going to be focusing on real food, proteins, vegetables, all right? You can eat a, a nice filling, satisfying serving of vegetables and still have a very low calorie intake because they are nutrient dense foods. Mm. Not calorie dense. That's, I, I think that's a good way for our, our listeners to think about that. And just because I care a lot about my partner's health, that doesn't mean cheesecake, right? Unfortunately, not so okay. much. Maybe right. once in a while. Sorry, John. Oh, and next time we'll talk about dessert, okay? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank Thanks you so again. Much, this has been uh, fascinating. Uh, yeah. And, you know, that's uh, food, food for thought, if you will, about how we can better age, maybe not by having so much food or the right kind of foods, as you might say. Yeah. But as John would say, but check with your doctor first. And our doctor that we check with first is always Dr. Lewis. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.